So the first question was what measures can telcos implement to prevent SIM swapping? So if you listen to my narrative and the story of uh, the SIM swapping, uh, it is very often um, a chain uh, that traverses from the telco into the bank because the money comes from somewhere. The money comes from a bank account. And so um, aside from um, enforcing the fact that the bank is checking, you know, for the MC and the IMA of the device, um, you know, the telco can ensure it is happening. Very often, uh, there's an assumption that it is happening. But you actually need to, between the two parties, between the handshake, you actually need to, you know, check that whoever is providing the service has put in place certain measures. So that would be one way of going about it. Um, then we have a second question. How does cyber fraud prevention tackle the use of AI used to commit actual fraud, zero-day threat? Can I help on that? Yes, yes, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, so just to explain, I think this is something we've interacted uh, so many times in most of the banking sector. So <laughs> it really takes over your account. You will always move money to person you've never sent money to. You will do try to use exhaust the limits that you already have in your account. So with AI, it will always be out of your normal behavior. So behavioral analytics is the key here. I build a profile based on your historical information. And if you deviate today from that, I flag you. So that is one way of doing it. And that is basically what we do at uh, Net Guardians. Number two, we have what you call velocity checks and spike in transaction volume. At the end of the day, when somebody takes over your account, he wants to really empty as soon as possible. And from experience, we've seen an account where fraud happens or continues for three days since it was taken over. The reason being, nobody is doing monitoring during the first day to be able to pick that. This account is under uh, is already exhausting the limits that is available across all the digital channels, ranging from mm -hmm. ATM to mobile banking to Pesa Link, all those kind of digital channels. So I think with AI, you will pick automatically the fraudulent cases. It is so obvious. It's only that how you tweak it to be able to achieve that is where work is. And that is very, very key as well. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, uh, Bernard. Um, uh, there's another question. In the case where admin account password is shared, how can they ensure accountability to access of those accounts? So if you listen to the other presentations, um, and even in my summary, uh, there's a specific area of privileged access management. Um, and I think yesterday there was, um, there was a presenter, I think uh, the solution is called Walix, um, if you can go through yesterday's present, uh, presentation, you'll see it. So what it does, what it does is it can record all your activities and it can actually prevent you from carrying out certain um, activities on the database. So you can prevent an administrator from making changes at the database level. You can escalate an alert if he logs into a resource he's not supposed to log into and so on and so forth. So that's, that's really how you can, you, you can handle it. Yeah, yeah. So also to add on that, so basically it entails sitting in between the consoles and the sequence. So you are a, a go between the sequence and the consoles, what most ad, uh, admins uses them. So what you do is before they log in, they log in through such kind of systems. And then now they go to the specific system they want to access. And that way you act like a tunnel so that everything they are doing, mm -hmm. you are capturing them, tracking them, and you have accountability. So that if you have an account like admin 2020 and you have uh, 10 admins logging in through it, first I logged in as Bernard and then now I went to admin 2020. So all my activities will be tied to me as well. So at NetGuardians, we have also such kind of uh, systems in place that we put to monitor such kind of uh, things, what you call the consoles, the sequels, mm -hmm. and track anything that happens. You can also prevent someone from maybe doing a command like changing your balance in the backend. You know that is possible. I can change my balance from 10,000 yeah. to maybe 1 billion. So those are the things yeah. that are very key and you can pick it uh, before the fact as well. Excellent. I think that's really engaging. That has brought two questions, but I'm wondering, Collins, what's your opinion? I want these questions, but before I raise mine, 
I would, I'm quite curious to, to get an input from you on what's going on now or the discussion now. But I've got two pressing ones. It could just pop from you. So let me give you the chance. Okay. Uh, what are the two questions? I need to go with mine first, right? So one, I wanted to touch on the core banking system, on the, on the two-factor authenticator. That's something mm -hmm. that I know I am not a tech. It works quite, uh, quite well and very acceptable yeah. to a lot of users. But then when we go to core banking, what about the 3DS? This is something that, you know, from experience, you will see, uh, say from the fintech world, there are banks that have got 3DS enabled and some are not. Now, with regards to core banking, is that helping if some are and some are not, like using a 3DS uh, card? And also, sorry, uh, tokenization. Mm -hmm. Um, I would okay. be quite interested to, to, to hear your opinions on tokenization because that's something that today, say as a layperson, um, I would shy of being asked uh, to get my card saved or, you know, something to that nature unless I'm not informed. Like Netflix, for example, at the point I never realized what was being done. So there's a way that it has been tweaked so you don't realize that your card is being saved. But there are situations okay. where clearly a pair is asked um, you're prompted that your card will be, your details will be saved. So very interesting, um, you know, I would be quite interested to just hear your opinions on that. So 3DS and tokenization. Okay. okay. I'll talk about uh, 3DS first of all. See when uh, you have, you know, the, the if you look at any marketplace, every player is looking for competitive advantage. And uh, when you're looking for competitive advantage, you must do, first of all, to, to entice your customers and to give them assurance, you must show that uh, your system are foolproof and they can protect their money or their transactions. When you have different banks or different institutions having different implementations, it basically means when uh, the fraudsters are doing the profiling, you know, they also will profile the market. They'll know that when we, for institution X, uh, based on uh, what we've seen the implementation, we, we won't have much success. But for why, where we'll have more success because they've not, uh, the, in their core, the security of the core banking system is uh, not advanced or at a basic level, you'll find that more attacks uh, or rather more fraudulent uh, activities will be taking place uh, there. There's a time, uh, just a, a case that involved two banks. This was, it was around a credit card uh, fraud. And uh, what happened is that one bank had uh, two, the two-factor authentication, the other one did not have, and the, the OTP, the one-time uh, password. Now, what happened is that in all institutions, there are a number of bugs involved, but the ones uh, that had the OTP, the attempts were fewer. Initially, they tried on all, but after realizing where the rate of success is higher, the transactions in one of the institutions were significantly lower because they know success uh, is not uh, guaranteed. So it, both, it, it will have an effect on, those, on, on the fraudsters because they'll know where they have a higher chance of success and they'll hit uh, more there. Yeah, so basically they study your controls that you've put in place and know whether they are weak, strong controls and be able to go for the weaker controls. <clears throat> and then on tokenization, just to mention something else, like uh, for institutions, you need to carry your customers along. Uh, I see a lot of effort could be put in uh, making your systems better, making your processes better, but if you don't carry your customers along, especially here in in uh, part of the world, it will all be watered down because now the loophole or the weakest point will be on your customers uh, end. So I, I think that my general comment will be carrying customers uh, along. Uh, which is basically awareness and updating them and uh, letting them know why mm -hmm. it is important uh, for them and not for the bank. Okay. 
yeah so just to add i think 2fa is really important even globally is a very big issue especially where traditionally most of the people implemented their 2fa on their phone on their sim, sim tool so sim tool kit so i know like uh, in us there's a case of going of up to 600 million dollars lost uh, worth of cryptos was lost because uh the, the fraudsters were able to track one of the big uh, traders of cryptos they knew their phone number they went to a, a, a telco uh, then they did a sim swap took over his account they were able to take over his email accounts uh, and then from there they're able to now have access to the wallets crypto wallets and stole over 300 500 million dollars of uh, cryptos so you can see the extent to which it can go and i'm sure they are I know there should be an innovative way to implement a 2FA that is uh, coming. I know like for Google, they have really tried to move it away from the Steam or a toolkit-based uh, 2FA authentication. Taka, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry. I had not unmuted. So this could go on. Really, really happy with the remarks and all the contribution, Bill. Let me ask you to wrap this up in one minute, because I know the next session is around the corner. So kindly just wrap up this for us uh, in less than a minute, if you can. Yeah, so I can start off. Yeah, so for me, I'll say the way to go with the digital age is big data, uh, having uh, big data related controls, big data monitoring in place for you to be able to have a 360 overview of uh, uh, events or activities. Uh, Bill? William? Shall I go next? Okay, yeah. So I think for me, in, in summary, it's um, it's really to, to embrace the challenges we are facing uh, in the digital space. And especially for banks, um, you know, there's no turning back. Um, we, we have to embrace new technology from, from AI um, and so on. And we have, to, we, have to, we have to trust that, you know, the banks are acting in our interest because very often there's that gap between, you know, the customers, the victims and the banks. So the, the language being used is, you know, this bank is stealing from me and so on, but that's not really the case. So it's just about embracing the fact that fraudsters are just as sharp as we are and they are working overnight, you know, to try and get into our bank accounts. Absolutely. Thank you. So Rono will have you and then I can hand the session over to the chair to carry on. Yeah, I think I've already uh, summarized in a minute. I just said, uh, I think the future is uh, big data. With the, digi the digital age, the only way we can do this is uh, through big data to have that kind of 360 overview of everything. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. I think that was very engaging. Glad that the material is available. I wish you a lovely, lovely afternoon, rest of the afternoon or morning, wherever you are. Uh, I would like to pass on this now to the chair for the next session, I would imagine. <laughs>